alcohol. What is your relationship with alcohol? This is an important question and even more so if you're wanting to use your voice for singing. What is the impact of alcohol on the singing voice? I'm glad you asked that question. I've got the all important answers coming right up. Sound check. Check one, check two. G'day there, Dr. Dan here with another Voice Essentials video. And today we're talking about alcohol. Now, before we investigate the detrimental effects of alcohol on the human voice, let me state up front that I enjoy a glass of wine with a meal. I love standing around the great Australian barbecue with my mates, tongs in one hand and beer in another. And sometimes there's nothing better than relaxing with a glass of scotch while I watch my favorite movie. I say all this to point out that despite what I'm about to say, I am a consumer of alcohol in moderation. So what follows is not a foolhardy attempt to stop you from drinking your favourite alcoholic beverage. Moreover, I want singers, and by singers I mean you, to understand how alcohol affects the human voice and the singing performance. And what I won't be covering in this video are the significant personal and social issues that can arise for people who start to abuse the consumption of alcohol. Substance abuse, including alcohol, is a significant issue in modern society and musicians don't escape the statistics. If you think alcohol may be a problem for you, then I urge you to speak with a trusted uh, friend or family member who can support you towards recovery. One of the reasons why alcohol has become an issue for some singers is because of the rock and roll culture that tends to follow the pubs and clubs scene. It's not unusual, for example, for a band in residency at the local club to be offered an open bar tab during their set. For some, the temptation to consume alcohol, especially when it's offered for free, can be a temptation too great to resist. Another reason why singers fall into the trap of drinking alcohol while singing is to mask those pesky nerves. Often referred to as Dutch courage, apologies to the Dutch, some people use the calming effects of alcohol to quell their performance anxiety. Unfortunately, it's not only your inhibitions that, affect, uh, that are affected. Dr. Scott McCoy warns, the immediate effect of alcohol is to decrease inhibitions and fine motor control. So it is important to limit alcohol intake and avoid strenuous voice use if under the influence. You see, when your ability to monitor your voice use is impaired, then your capacity to manage your singing voice is compromised. This compromised state exposes the voice to overuse at a time when the voice may well be severely dehydrated. <laughs> There's that word again, dehydration. Few things sap your body of much needed water content like alcohol. And when your body is dehydrated, then your vocal folds are less likely to remain well lubricated, which in turn heightens phonatory threshold pressure, which merely results in you working the voice harder for significantly less result. Essentially, alcohol can place the voice into a negative downward spiral, a vocal health nosedive that can only be rectified by the cessation of consumption. And when discussing the lifestyle of many contemporary singers, Amy Lebowitz Cooper writes, it's not that we don't want you to enjoy yourself, but if you are a singer, then you are a professional. Singing is your work. When you treat your work with care, others will notice and you'll be giving yourself every chance to succeed in your genre and life. I'd go one step further by stating that if you are a singer, then you are your instrument. Everything that you ingest will have some form of impact on the health and function of your voice. Now, at this point, I can hear you saying, but Dr. Dan, doesn't the rule of moderation apply here? Absolutely. Generally speaking, alcohol should always be consumed moderately, but when it comes time to sing, I turn the dial of caution from moderation down to abstinence. Professor Sadloff writes, many experts oppose its use because of its vasodilatory effect and consequent mucosal alteration. Vasodilatory is the medical term for the widening of blood vessels. With the widening of blood vessels due mainly to the dehydrating effect of the alcohol, 
comes the potential for an abnormal accumulation of blood within the vocal folds. And this, in turn, heightens the risk of vocal fold hemorrhage. It's important that I stress here that one glass of beer before you sing is most probably not going to destroy your voice. The challenge is one beer can all too easily lead to a third. But even if you're only having one standard drink before you sing, over time the accumulative effect can be detrimental. And we can't close without mentioning the heightened risk of reflux for those people who consume alcohol. Lita Skurs writes, for some alcohol can be a reflux trigger. As with caffeine, I typically advocate for moderation in alcohol consumption taking cue from most healthcare providers who recommend limiting oneself to no more than one to two drinks per day. Actually, in Australia, many medical pr practitioners advise two to three days of complete abstinence from alcohol consumption. I also highly recommend this practice and personally observe Monday through Wednesday as my alcohol-free days. This not only gives my liver a rest, which has to work hard to metabolize the alcohol, but it also helps me to manage my reflux, which incidentally is aggravated more so by spirits like scotch and fortified wines like port, which have high levels of acidity. So let me finish by offering a good rule of thumb when it comes to singers and the consumption of alcohol. I advise my adult students to avoid alcohol during the 24 hours preceding significant vocal load. Now this means abstaining from the open bar tab and waiting until after the gig to share a glass with friends. This suggestion comes with the small caveat, if you have another performance the next day, then you're best to make that beverage a glass of room temperature water. Tomorrow's performance is just as important as the last. So whether it be for reasons of vocal health, dehydration, reflux, reflux management, improved vocal performance, or merely overall well-being, alcohol consumption is something that we all need to respect and monitor. Perhaps you've noticed some adverse effects of alcohol on your singing voice. Leave your comments below so that we can all learn from your experience. I look forward to reading and learning from all of your thoughts. I'm Dr. Dan, sing well.